Hi all, Pager here. I uh, thought I'd just give a uh, quick video on my Minn Kota installation on my uh, six and a half meter plate boat. Don't see too much of it out there. Um, a lot of them getting put on boats lately. So I thought I'd uh, do an installation that may help someone or just show someone how I've gone about doing it. Um, it was good fun. Helped me in recovery. I've been a bit crook of late but on the on the men so fingers crossed i'll get the get to use it soon haven't used it yet but it's been tested and um all works so anyway i'll uh get my mug off the camera and i'll i'll talk about talk a bit about it so here she is uh six and a half meter plate boat i'll talk about the boat another time but focus in on the installation now i wanted to try and get the installation of the motor on the boat without modifying my boat and I have been lucky. I haven't done any welding here. I haven't needed to modify any of the bow rail. It's, um, it's could only go one spot and it's fitted in snugly, nice and neat. Uh, she gets in the water, eat. I'll, I'll show you dropping it in. Plenty of clearance at the front here. Uh, made up some starboard just to make a flat surface to put the uh, quick connect board to. So she's a 36 volt Minn Kota, uh, 112 pound thrust and 87 inch shaft. So it's the longest one in the, um, in, in its model. And uh, yeah, so I'll jump up and uh, show you, show you the install. As you can see back here, I didn't have a lot of clearance, but it's uh, been a snug fit. Um, that bracket supplied with the unit uh, has been been perfect, so that's good. Yeah, anyone buying these units too, they actually come these larger units. Just check with your supplier, but if you're getting one, they actually come with that bracket in the box and the quick connect plate. Now, some people, I didn't know, I bought a second plate um, and I wasn't informed by the shop. They didn't even know what was in the box. So just for FYI, that, um, that plate's installed. The only modification, modification I had to do was I cut a little bit of this back on, um, all this is is a lid for the, for the anchor well. So I cut a little bit, bit, bit of it back and I modified the um, the sheets here. So essentially I used the starboard just for a flat surface um, and then mounted everything to that. So I can still access my wiring, go run through all with the um, drum winch wires. I uh, ran it through the cab and then to the front, so I've got the proper larger plug there as you see she's nice and snug along so i'll try and do this with one hand She's in the water, you can see it's nice and clear of the bell rail. The depth I've got at the moment, that's right down to the ground. And I've got a fair bit to play with at the top. So hindsight, I may have gone a smaller shaft, but then I would have put the motor down here. So I'm actually very happy with the installation. So yeah, sure, when it's up, I lose the, the walk around for this one side. But um, minor detail, really. Anyway, she's she's in. So I'll talk about the. I'll go in the cab and show you the batteries that I've got. I went. Obviously, it's a 36 volt, and I've gone um, lithium, and in the Invicta range, an Australian-made battery. Turn some fans on. 
okay so just in the cab underneath the floor essentially toilet used to be here i've taken that out because we found out essentially we we never used it when you've got your bed made up my wife and that but essentially yeah, you're not going to get up in the middle of the night and kick everyone out of bed and um uh, to use the toilet so we've we've stuck the buckets out the back so so i got rid of it and it gives me a bit of storage under the floor but okay so here's the battery so i've got 312 312 volt 100 amp hour lithium invicta batteries now these are the non-bluetooth type but of course they've got battery management why did i go 312 volt batteries now the reason behind that is um so i can charge on the water it's a simple it's as simple as that very limited dc dc charges out in the market 36 volts and if there is they're sold out globally um so i've gone three so on the water and i've um partnered it with a lithium troll bridge 36 volt so what this does is it keeps the batteries in parallel they can be charged as 12 volt batteries. When you want to use the electric motor, you just turn it on and this switches over automatically to 36 volts and you can uh, use the motor to your heart's content. I've installed a Victron smart shunt on the supply to the motor. Now that keeps an eye on the percentage of charge for the 36 volts. I'll put a screenshot of that app up. So just Bluetooth to your phone, a little app on your phone, and then away you go. Now, another part of the install was the, the hockey puck that comes with it. A lot of people actually think that it's a um, GPS. It's not. It's a heading sensor. GPS pucks need to be outside. Heading sensors do not. They should be as close to your keel as possible and to the waterline. So here's my Simrad one, so the Precision 9, that gives me the direction of heading. So it's not my center line of the boat's here, my water line's roughly about the same. And so it needs to be in line with that keel, not pointing at the keel, in line, parallel with the keel. So that gives me radar overlay on maps and uh, more precision when it comes to using the Albert uh, Nag one. Um, neck one um, uh, autopilot in the boat so so yeah so that that there gives you that for your simrad and then this is just your heading sensor for your for your um, Minn Kota, uh electric motor and essentially it just tells the Minn Kota which way is forward that's all it is so there's a bit of calibrating to do on that which which um, you can, yeah, there's plenty of videos about how to calibrate them um, online. So anyway, that's my little setup. I've uh, got a 60 amp fuse. That's the power supply to the, to the motor. It goes wire straight up through here and then straight out, um, as you saw before, out near the trolling motor. I have a isolation switch here. This is the yellow wire. So it's essentially battery power from the start battery and the motor that goes through to here to charge the batteries on the water. Essentially, I have it isolated and then it'll always be set up in 36 volts. If I'm on the water and I need more charge, I'm out there for days on end and I need to do a little bit of charge, then I'll flip that over while I'm moving from spot to spot or on the way home or or whatever and it can send some charge to these batteries and um, the trail bridge automatically charges all three um, and and balances them out so they get equal charge so yeah so i've had to do a bit of shuffling around water pumps fresh water pumps because i've got the water blade underneath my bum here so a little bit of shuffling around of stuff because i used to have a slimline battery in the front there um, yeah, that's another story. I've changed all my batteries on the boat to Invicta. So even my start battery is a um, hybrid starter. So that that's it. So that's uh, that's a quick rundown of that. I might do another video at some time 
of the first trial on the water with the motor and uh, some more rundown of my my setup in the boat and how I've gone about setting it up. It's always interesting to see what other people have done. Oh yeah, chargers. Um, I will mount this in the boat. That's an onboard three bank charger uh, for shore, shore power. So this is an American unit and I've just got a inverter here at home that um, inverts from our 240 to 110 volts to run that. So I've got one for the the lithium batteries at the back as well so i've got a 200 amp hour house and that's my hybrid starter it's got a jump start feature there so through the technology a dc dc charger looks after the charge for my house surge protector and all well, the battery switches etc so yeah all right i'll uh i'll do another rundown of the boat at some time but uh, nice to meet you all and see you out in the water